like the uh, closer we get to God, sometimes it's uh, the more critical we get of others. Yeah. I'm going to say something, and I'm at liberty to say something. I was raised in the Pentecostal holiness movement. I still consider myself to be part of it. So I'm at liberty to say what I'm getting ready to say. Uh, I watched it as I was growing up. These folks, as Toby was talking about, I know a lot of people may have got a little bit offended when he said they was, uh, you know, all of us has got, sometimes has got a little bit of Pharisee in us. It's a truth. <laughs> you know, we look at other people because we don't do it. We're judgmental because somebody else does it. And, you know, some people ain't learned, you know, different. But, boy, i tell you what. Growing up in the holiness church, some, they, 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 they you know, they were so close to God. Uh, you know, some of them, you know, they, they with their dress and, and, and with, the way they lived, and, and man, they were so rude to people that didn't live like they lived. You know what I'm saying? And they hurt a lot of people. And uh, it, 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 it's offensive. And, but, but you had some of those, I had... Uh, a great aunt, my mama's uh, Aunt Myrtle Odell from up at Beckley. Oh, she, she, she was one of them saints of God. If if one of the young ladies wasn't doing something, uh, you know that she approved of or dressing the way that she approved of, she just prayed for. Her. She just prayed that God would condemn them and change their heart. And the Lord would. The Lord would. And and but but you just you know, you got these people that's got these Pharisee spirit and you know they just they just down people and, and talk about people. You know, and, and I know people, you know, you remember when television set on legs You know, they had legs about that tall. And Debbie grew up in a Nazarene church. I was just as bad. <laughs> because I preached before I started pastoring. I done most of my evangelistic work in the Nazarene church. But And, and me and Ricky had a buddy that attended a uh, certain church at they would wear the legs off of their TV, uh, dragging it from the back room to the living room, you know. They would drag that thing out of the back room into the living room, you know, late at night, and they'd watch it. And then they'd drag it back and cover it up with bed sheets and everything, you know, hoping the pastor didn't see it the next day. That's a Pharisee. That's a Pharisee, as Toby was talking about. But listen to me, we've all sinned, the Bible said, and come short of the glory of God. And like Toby said, the Sunday school teachers wear a suit. I wear a suit because I'm a pastor, because we respect the position that we hold in the church. But our attire don't make us any closer to God than anybody else. And you know what? When we stand in judgment, the word of God says, though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. I'm going to stand, Ronnie, in the same judgment that the janitor of this church stands in. I'll be judged out of the same book 
that the song leader is going to be judged out of. I'll be judged out of the same book that the person that cuts the grass is going to be judged out of. We'll all stand on level ground. And I'm telling you what, it's a serious business. A lot of people don't want to realize it, but it is. And I'm glad for the word as Brother Toby presented this morning. I just don't want to forget what God's done. It's through mercy and grace that we are where we are today. We can do all of these things. We can do all of these things that make ourselves look good. The word of God said, you know, they're on the outside. But on the inside, they're as raging wolves, right? We can make the outside. Lord, you could take, you could listen to it. If you wanted to blow your money, you could take me downtown and, and waste a bunch of money. They could put a hairpiece on me. <laughs> listen, put some nice clothes and put some makeup on me and really make and and and, and really make me look like something. And, and tell me to keep my mouth shut because you know my speech was get myself. They said, Richard, we're gonna we're gonna dress you up. We're gonna make you look good, and, but don't open your mouth because if you open your mouth, you're gonna blow it. But they said, we're really and we're gonna walk you through Charleston, and people think you're a multimillionaire. But you know what? It ain't gonna change. The goofiness up here, and it ain't gonna change the mentality up here. The only thing that can change our heart is Jesus Christ. Amen. We can go to church as Toby when he first got up here this morning. People say, "Well, I believe," and and they say, "I pray." But the word of God said, and I told Bob when I was witnessing to Bob a week before he got saved, I said, Bob, Bob said, well, I believe differently. And you know what? People think that they can, you know, do this Christian thing their own way. Listen, the only way we're going to get to heaven is through and by Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, I am the truth. And I am the life. Zach, prepare to get a song if you would. If you haven't already. But people today has got the mindset, Ronnie, that they're just, they've got their own way they're going to heaven. Come on. Yeah. They've got their own way, you know. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, they're just going to do it their way. Yeah. And again, I'll share with you. When I was talking to Bob Shanklin, Bob said, well, he wasn't a smart aleck or nothing. He said, I believe different than everybody else. Bob sat here in the church, and he'll amen me, and he'll tell you that I'm telling the truth. Two years ago, this conversation, just a little over two years, two years ago last month, Bob said, I believe different than most people do. Right, Bob? Right. Bob said, I've been a volunteer fireman about all my life. Right, Bob? That's what you said, brother. Amen. He said, I do a lot of charity work. Right, Bob? Amen. He was a Pharisee, but Toby, just like he would talk. He said, I help a lot of people. Right, Bob? Amen. And he said, I think that makes me okay with God. Right, Bob? I said, Bob, I said, I feel like that myself and everybody else upon the face of the earth is not doing you guys right. Church, all of us, should be patting these volunteer firemen on the back more. Amen. Come on. Yep. They're giving their time and their effort 
to look out for us and to help us, and we don't appreciate him enough. Yeah. And I told Bob that. And I said, you know what, Bob? I said, I believe with all of my heart that God Almighty is looking down from heaven and smiling upon you folks for the work, the good work that you do. And I said, you're not appreciated enough. That's what I said, wasn't it, Bob? I said, but Bob, the word of God said, ye must be born again. You're not going to get to heaven by charity work, by staying up all night and, and fighting fire and, and saving somebody's life, which is outstanding and wonderful work for rescuing somebody's little baby out of a fire when you did not have to do it. That's volunteer work. And what a terrible thing for somebody like that to go to hell when they've saved somebody's little baby from a burning house. But if they're not born again, they're going to hell. You say, preacher, that's harsh words. It's the truth. The Bible says ye must be born again. Some says, I don't believe that. You know what? I know Christians that no, no, no longer believe that. People that once called themselves Christian, I don't believe that no longer. It breaks your heart. But listen, it's a word of God and it'll stand forever. But I said, Bob, the word of God said you must be born again. A week later, Bob accepted that. And today, he's on his way to heaven. And he's still a volunteer fireman. Still doing that good work. But he's on his way to heaven serving the Lord. Are you ready? If you don't know the Lord, you can be on your way to heaven. Father, we come before you this morning, and God, we thank you for a wonderful lesson taught by our brother Toby. We ask this morning, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to get rid of the Pharisee in our life. Lord, that we would quit trying to justify our good works. And Lord, sometimes we do. Sometimes all of us, we do. We look at what we've done and how much we've went above and beyond what's commanded of us or, or, or ask of us, Lord. But, Lord, we'll never make it into your kingdom, Lord, without grace and mercy. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, never to justify ourselves, Lord, by our works. But we'll always be thankful for grace and mercy. Help somebody, Lord. I believe somebody's heart was touched this morning. Lord, help them to see that they'll never be able to justify themselves through works or deeds, Lord, but it'll be through grace and mercy. Through, through your compassion, Lord, is the only way they'll be saved. And Father, help them right now, Lord, to accept grace and mercy. Help them right now to say, Lord, I need compassion. I need grace and mercy applied to my heart and life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every time I look in the holy book, I want to tremble. When I read about the part where that carpenter cleared the temple. Because those buyers and sellers no different fellas than what I profess to be. And it causes me pain to know I'm not the man I should be. So I put my hand in the hand of the man who steal the water. Put my hand in the hand of the man Calm the sea. Took a look at myself. 
I profess to be Put my hand in the hand of the man from Galilee Put your hand in the hand of the man Steal the water Put your hand in the hand of a man Calm the sea Take a look at yourself And you will look at others differently Put your hand in the hand of a man From Galilee 